Welcome to ZIA TV, covering small cap stocks and emerging companies. Today we're going in depth with Zach's analyst, John Vandermosten. John, tell us a little bit about the supply of capital in the biotech sector, would you? Sure, Terry. Uh, you know, I think we can start out with just discussing a little bit about kind of where markets have been, uh, because that leads, I think, you know, where, where the supply of capital comes from. If we go back about two years ago, um, and look at the uh, NASDAQ biotechnology index, it was trading at about 4,200. Um, you know, and then the six months following the summer of 2015, it fell about 40%. And uh, since then, it's traded pretty much in a range, but, but it's about up 20% from the trough and also up 13% year to date. And I think that, uh, you know, what this has done uh, has, has kind of held investors back a little bit. Uh, they are a little bit concerned about direction of the markets. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, though, uh, many, many companies that have advanced their programs from previous levels uh, are trading at much lower levels today. And uh, it, this is an opportunity for investors to get in at, at pretty attractive uh, stock prices. So getting back to the supply uh, of capital in the biotech sector, has all of this started having an impact yet? Uh, it sure has. Uh, you know, there are several factors that I think ha that have held investors back a little bit. Um, the first of those is just what's been going on in the government. Um, you know, we've heard that there might be controls in terms of drug pricing. Uh, there's also been talk of cutting funding to the NAIH and other uh, government programs that, that fund a lot of um, research and, and other such things that really help a lot of these programs get off the ground. Uh, secondly, uh, another factor I think that's been impacting capital flows is the capital restrictions that were in place in China in the first quarter. Uh, these are gone now, but I think that, uh, you know, if an incremental part of capital is, is gone, then, you know, it will affect the number of deals that gets done. Um, thirdly, I think investors may be a little bit concerned about, you know, the impact that high drug prices might have on some of the intermediaries, uh, such as the payers, the PBMs, uh, and, and insurance companies that, uh, you know, provide health services. Uh, what these intermediaries have done has been to uh, really restrict their formularies, and unless a drug is really efficacious, um, they may not even put it on their, their formulary, which really can have an impact in terms of uh, financial modeling and what the ultimate uh, uptake will be for a drug. So what are the types of companies that are actually battling this effectively, John? Uh, well, you know, there are a number of uh, companies that, that I can highlight that have, um, you know, recently raised capital, but they're trading at a lower level uh, than their previous financing round. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Azure RX. Uh, this is a, a uh, company that is developing a, um, uh, a lipase that helps uh, the body digest fats. Uh, they recently provided some data from a, from a phase two trial. Uh, which was was very promising. Uh, they've also um, lost a a potential competitor who was uh, who had a drug in phase three trials, which which just effectively dropped out. So you know they are in a better position, even though the stock price is lower compared to their previous financing. Uh, another one, uh, the Canadian Resverologics. Uh, this company just today announced that they raised ten million dollars, but again, it was at lower levels than uh, their previous financing. Uh, creating a great opportunity for investors. Um, this company has had a number of phase one trials since that, since that previous capital raise that have pointed to potentially expanded indications. And they've also had a number of uh, positive uh, intermediate data points from their bet on MACE trial for their, for their lead candidate, Apabetalone. Uh, yet another, uh, Springbank Pharmaceuticals, uh, they issued uh, an IPO last May at about $12 and then raised capital again uh, late last year at about $9. Uh, this company has uh, posted also very good phase 2A data. Uh, they had uh, the first cohort of their drug, which showed higher efficacy than expected on uh, the, pre uh, the, the first dose, um, which was which better than expected. And again, you know, the, the stock traded down from IPO levels, even though the program has continued to advance. Uh, a final one that comes to mind is uh, another Canadian stock called Oncolytics. Uh, they raised 10 million just a few weeks ago, 10 million Canadian, and uh, they had outstanding data in uh, in April. They announced a potential doubling of uh, survival benefit uh, from their drug Realisen, uh, and you know since that announcement, the the stock is actually lower than where it was before. Also, are um, you know ones that I've highlighted here 
have continued to advance their programs, but the stock price has not uh, has not uh, followed that uh, positive data from the company. And this provides a great opportunity for investors to get in at a de-risked level uh, and also at a lower stock price level. So, John, uh, before I wrap it up here, put it all in perspective for us. Bottom line it. What are the main takeaways from our conversation here? Sure. So I think there are a number of opportunities out there, a few of which I, I mentioned to you today, where, uh, you know, a company, uh, several companies have advanced their programs. They've met their milestones. They've de-risked their programs from where they were, you know, a year or two ago. Uh, but the stock is trading at a lower price than where it was. And I think this is a, a clear opportunity for, for those that are willing to take on uh, a little risk and, and ignore some of these short-term uh, hiccups that uh, we might see out there, but uh, you know, can look towards the long, long term. So with regard to your research specifically, John, any upcoming news on that front? Um, well, you know, I think you know, we're really wanting to see what will happen uh, on the government side of things. You know, one po potential positive out there is that the uh, new FDA commissioner, Scott Gottlieb, he is uh, potentially working on an opportunity to advance uh, drug uh, approvals, um, streamline them, make them occur a little bit quicker. Uh, so this is a potential positive that, you know, we could see. All right, John, thanks for being with us. And thank you for joining us here on ZIA TV. Don't forget, you can read Zach's analyst coverage at scr.zax.com.